So welcome to GoTo Training Fundamentals. My name is Kathy Long. I'm the Senior Training Specialist for the in Center for Instructional Technology. Um, I'm so glad that you could join me today. Today we're going to be specifically talking about how we can use GoTo Training to do breakout sessions and how we can use that specifically how you're using that to teach Math 123. So today we're going to learn some, um, some several success tips on how to conduct a good synchronous sessions. Um, there are really about five steps to really having a good session. We're going to talk about how to set up your go-to training session. So how do you set that up? Um, how do you build that? And that's really step number one. And we're also going to talk about the basic tools that are available to you in go-to training, the differences between the go-to products. Um, we're going to talk about how to navigate that go-to training control panel. And we're also going to learn how to add a go-to training session link in your Ivy Learn course. All right, so you will need some required materials when you're building your go-to training session. And the first thing you're going to need to have is your go-to go to training user account. Um, so you should have received an email. If you were already part of the GoTo products, if you've used GoTo Meeting before, um, it'll just add GoTo Training as part of your account services. You would have received an email specifically, I think, from LogMeIn, who is the new parent company for GoTo Training. Um, you should see that maybe in your spam folder, clutter, if that Microsoft Outlook has been messing with your account. Um, we did send a whole list of Math123 synchronous users uh, to have those accounts created. So if you don't have that account created, please reach out to your instructional designer or if you have a, a Math123 lead or even a help desk ticket and just let us know. We'll make sure that you get those credentials again. Now, anybody can log in to a GoToMeeting, a GoToWebinar or a GoToTraining session with the link. So that's not a problem. But if you want to create your own sessions and conduct your own sessions, that's where that account becomes very important. There are five steps to creating a great session. And number one is preparation. And we're going to go through those steps for preparation. But you really want to think about who your audience is and what is your purpose. Um, so you want to think about how am I going to use this synchronous session? What do I want the students to get out of it? Um, how am I going to share that content? And what action do I want them to take? You should also kind of be aware of your audience's attention span. So you want to make it as interactive as possible. You want to break up your sessions um, into many sections. So instead of you might want to combine a lecture, like maybe how to work out a, a problem or a process, and then break that into a practice session. Um, so just think about how you're going to be delivering that content. You also want to make sure that you know your technology, and that's part of what we're going to be doing today, but you're also going to want to practice with that. So we're going to prepare, we're going to create content, we're going to practice, and believe me, the go-to training is very quirky. There's lots of extra bells and whistles, and every time you add an extra element, it, it can add another level of... Um, Difficulty, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, we're also going to talk about how you deliver that presentation and then how to engage your students. So let's go ahead and jump right into our um, GoTo Training website. So I'm going to change my screen here for you. GoTo has several different products. So we have GoToMeeting, and most of you have probably participated in a GoToMeeting at one point in time. You still have screen sharing capabilities. It's very easy to use. Um, I'm a big fan of all the GoTo products. But the GoToMeeting is really designed for people 25 people or less. A lot of our instructors are using this for study sessions, for curriculum meetings. Um, it's a way for you to all be online at the same time. The microphones come in unmuted, and you can use the chat feature. So it's very bare bones, basic functionality. Go to webinars or what I use. I love that tool. It's very, very easy to have a large audience. I can create polls. I can create, um, I can add handouts so people can download those. 
their microphones can be muted or unmuted when they come into the process. Um, we can use the question box to facilitate questions. It's a very powerful tool and it's for 100 people or less. The GoTo training product, which we're going to talk about today, can have up to 200 people in that session. Now, I don't expect any of you will have that many participants, but you could. Um, a couple extra activities that you have in GoTo training that you don't have in the other ones is the ability to give an assessment. And you can give that assessment during the presentation, or it will send that assessment to that student after the presentation. Now, before you get too excited about that, it's very bare bones. It's not, you can't add any pictures. It's multiple choice or multiple answer. So it's not a lot of flexibility, but you do have that ability. And then it tracks those um, answers and it gives you a nice training report about that. GoToTraining also has the, these breakout rooms. So this allows you to work in small groups and hopefully allow your students to have that peer-to-peer -peer connection, as well as you being able to monitor and jump in and out of those rooms um, to communicate with your students. Okay. All right, so let's talk about first how we're going to create our Go-To training session. So I would just, in my browser bar, go go to training.com. I just put that in the chat box for you. Okay, so it's go to training.com. I log in using my credentials. I set that up the first time. It's the same thing you used for um, go to meeting if you have it. If not, um, in that email that you received, there's probably a prompt with the username and password. You're going to use your Ivy Tech email address. And then your password will be very unique. It'll be a, a new password. You can create it once. I've never been prompted to change my password, uh, but it is a good habit to get into. It does not have to be the same password that you use for any of the Ivy Learn or My Ivy products here on campus. It can be a unique password, just something that you're going to remember. Once you open up, and I hope you can see this, let's check the audience view here you will get this um, menu of different items. So you'll see across the very top of the page, um, you can access different go-to products. And most importantly, here's this 24-7 support. And GoTo does a really good job of providing additional training resources. So if you need a guide, if you want to watch a quick tutorial, this 24-7 support is available to you um, at any time for both you or your students to um, find out more information about the product. So a good resource to have. Okay. Over here on the left-hand side, we have a menu. Okay, And these top areas here are different sections and then this getting started is just kind of like a little check mark of things that you need to do when you're setting up your session okay so the first thing we're going to do we have this plus create a training session so that's what we would click to create our training session you then have a list of my trainings and you'll see that's what section I'm in right now my trainings here are my upcoming training events, and I can also see a list of my past training events. I just click on either one of those tabs, and it opens up that information. The library is where you can actually create um, course materials. So maybe I want to create a poll question or a test question or something that I'm going to use um, in all of my sessions. You can create that and add it to the library. So you create it ahead of time, and then you can just add it to the training session that you um, are creating. Okay. So let me go ahead and click on that, for example, just to give you an idea. So when I click on my library, you'll see that I've added um, several items materials, things that I'm going to use um, in my presentation. I have, I can create tests here. I can create polls. And I can also create an evaluation, so a survey type of idea. Um, and that's all kept here in my library. And I can very easily, once I've created those items here, add those to my training sessions. You can also create these items while you're creating a training session, okay? But this is kind of a, a storage place. 
Catalogs is not something that we're going to use. Catalogs is a public catalog, so if you were going to sell your programming, you would create a catalog. It's published out to the public at large, every go-to um, user, um, so they could attend one of your sessions. So we're not going to use that. Here's also a way where you can access your recordings. Here's your report feature, which is very robust. Um, what was the student partic participation? What questions did they ask? How active were they? When did they log in? When did they log out? Can all be found under your um, reports. You can set general settings. And at a later date, I'd like to invite you to come see these labs because I just, this is a new feature, and I just um, started practicing with it. And unfortunately, it's not available in GoToTraining um, in the session we're in now. You have to set up its own individual use. But what it does is I can focus my webcam on a whiteboard and it miraculously kind of ghosts me out so you don't really see me. You see me, but you don't see me in full color and you can see the whiteboard. So it just kind of, it's like x-ray vision. It just goes right through you and right to the whiteboard. So you could actually work out math problems using your whiteboard. And you might find that this might be a better solution for you um, than the breakout sessions. So something just to think about, and I'd love to be able to share this with you um, at a later time. Unfortunately, I can't switch sites while we're doing our presentation today. Now, you can also, once you log in to go to training, there's a wonderful video here if you want to jump ahead and kind of look at what that is and maybe practice on your own. It's very easy to use, and it's really pretty cool. You can kind of see it here um, in this image, and this person really kind of um, even disappears more than that, and you can see the whiteboard. So, something to think about. All right, so let's create our own training session. So I think I skipped right over it, but you do need to go to account. You're also going to need your class schedule. So when are you going to be scheduling these events? And that's a very important detail um, for when you're actually creating these sessions. So you want your class schedule. I'm going to give it a title, and so I'm probably going to label that um, like my meeting days. Okay, so Math 123, maybe I'm teaching 01H, whatever that might be, whatever means something to you and means something to your students. And I might even say, I'm going to, I'm going to call this my demo since um, we're just demonstrating this, but maybe I put the days and times that this meets. I can give it a description what this session is about, okay? And this is where your schedule comes in under the occurs. So I can select once, I can select weekly, monthly, or a custom schedule. So if you are teaching a weekly session and you're gonna have meet synchron synchronously with your students once a week, I can select weekly and from the dates here, let's say we're gonna classes start May 22nd, but my session meets on Wednesdays, the 24th, and I'm going to meet weekly, and I'm going to give it a time, maybe my time of the day is 2 o'clock, and it automatically schedules it for an hour, but you can expand that, and then you want it to end, so we had May 24th, and say our sessions end on June 28th. I can set my time zone. By default, everything is Eastern Standard Time. And this is very important. Participants register once to attend all sessions. So once the student is registered, they get that link and they have the same link every time you have a session. If you have participants register for individual sessions, they can register for one session and never attend again. So, for example, um, when we set up this training session for you, the go-to training, you had the option of joining me last week or today on Monday. I used uh, register for individual sessions. You're going to want to make sure that you use for your math course once to attend all sessions. Now, if you are teaching, a, especially in the summer, you're going to be meeting twice a week in a synchronous environment, you're going to want to come up here, <clears throat> excuse me, and under occurs, 
you're going to select custom schedule. Okay, so I click custom schedule and you're going to have to create an event for every time you meet. It doesn't automatically populate those. So I would say, okay, I'm going to meet on Tuesday the 23rd from 2 to 3 or whatever time frame and I click and add another session and I'm going to meet on Thursdays from 2 to 3 and then I would go to my next week and you would just build out your whole calendar schedule. Any questions so far on how you're selecting your times? Okay. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and select Schedule. You'll see that I've now, um, this is the name of my course. Here are my dates and times. It meets three times. Participants can use their computer microphone or um, telephone. I can edit that if I want that to be something different. Here is where I create my, create my activities. So, for example, I might want to add some materials. You'll notice in these sections, there's these little triangles. This is a play button. It'll take you into a brief tutorial about each one of these sections. Okay? When you click on breakout, there's actually some information about how to set up your breakout sessions. Here's a guide for you how to do that and how to manage your materials. So there's additional written instructions built right into this process. Okay. I'm going to go back to manage training okay, in my course. All right, and I'm going to show you how to um, add materials. So I can either add it from my storage device or I can add materials from my library. So add material, this is a plus sign, it's very typical. I can add it from my storage device, so from my computer. I can add it from my library, which is located over here on the left side of the menu, or I can add a URL. So I'm going to go ahead and select from my library. And I'm going to add, um, I actually took this PDF from your Math 123 course, uh, what is quantitative reasoning. And I'm also going to add um, my five steps to doing a good synchronous session. And I click Add Materials. You can go back and add these materials at any time, even live during the session. So I'm going to click Manage Training. And I'm going to add a test just so you can see what that looks like in your environment. Oops. And I'm going to do that for my library as well. Okay. So I can add all kinds of content uh, from my library or from my control panel. The test itself is something that's been generated in the uh, GoTo training product. Okay. All right, this link right here, so you can add polls and everything you need right here. So this is just going to follow that same process that we've been demonstrating. Okay. Here is your registration link. So you want the students to be able to register for this session. Once a student registers for the session, they are emailed their very own custom link to join the presentation. So I'm going to highlight my link because this is what you're going to need to add into your math course. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to control C for copy. And I'm going to go into the Ivy Learn platform. So you'll see I'm opening up my Ivy Learn course right here to the dashboard. And I believe, oh, let me open it back up. Someone gave me access to your statewide course, the master. So I don't like to keep it out on where I'm doing a lot of demonstrations. Oh, there it is, quantitative reasoning. I'm just highlighting that little star, which means it's making it available on the dashboard. 
if you're not familiar with that. Okay, so I'm going to access my math course by clicking the course card. And when you go into modules, the instructional designer and the mentor and the subject matter, matter expert, whoever developed this course, um, did a very nice job of leaving you a placeholder to add this link. So if I go through my modules, I can click through by slide, or I can actually um, look at this in an index view by clicking on module. This is probably the easier way to do it. I'm going to go down here and find synchronous session. So they've left you a placeholder. I'm going to click on synchronous session. I'm going to go up here to the edit button. I'm going to write it, um, some description or directions to my students. So I've given some instructions. I hit Control V. Okay, so this is the link the students need to register in. I want to make sure that there is actually a link here. So I'm going to highlight this text. And in the content editor, I'm going to select link to URL. It automatically populates for me. I click update link. Okay, you'll see that flash of yellow that lets you know that the link has been created. and then I click Save. Okay, so now this is what the student would see and they would click this link and it takes them to the registration page. Okay, and it shows them all the times we're going to meet. They're going to enter in their first name, last name, and email address. When they click register, they get an individual email with their specific link on how to access your GoTo session. All right, so that's now we've, we're prepared. We've set up our session, we've added that link into our class sessions or into our module. Now remember, you probably want to do this for each and every module, and you might even want to add an announcement just so they'll have that link at their fingertips. Um, this is actually the master course, so if you'll give me just a second, I want to go ahead and click edit again and delete this content um, so I don't make this any more difficult for the faculty um, than it needs to be. Okay, now we're back to the master being nice and clean. Okay, any questions about how you build your training session? Let me know in the chat box or just turn on your microphone and give me any comments or questions that you might have. Okay, all right. Let's take a look at what the GoTo training module looks like from the faculty perspective. I'm going to, if you'll give me just a second, I'm going to change screens. I'm using two monitors. I find that that's very, um, it's a lot easier to use um, if you're doing a session. Okay. All right, so what you're looking at is my control panel. Um, on the left-hand side, these are quick little teacher instructor tools or presenter tools. So this little arrow hides the control panel. It shuts it. Click it again. It opens back up. Every instructor or presenter has an audience view, and I try to keep an eye on this. 
because a lot of times if you're scrolling through content or if you're changing screens frequently, um, it'll start buffering and students may not get to see the information as quickly as you're talking. So just be really careful and practice with your pacing. The microphone um, opens up all of the microphones are on when it first comes in. To mute your microphone, you click the little microphone button. You notice that there was a little um, pop-up that says you are muted, and now that I'm unmuted, this little icon also turns green. I can use a webcam if I want to. Um, I don't recommend it unless that's the featured part of your content. Every time you add a webinar, that takes up a lot more bandwidth and if you're on a wireless um, machine and if it's not the focus I don't use my webcam. If I'm presenting a guest lecturer then perhaps I would make that webcam a little bit more um, prominent or if you're going to lecture before you get into um, your presentation or the actual practice that might be a good use of your webcam. I can also, this is allowing me to show my screen, which is also under the screen sharing. So under the screen sharing, you'll notice that I have several options. So I can show my main monitor, which is over here on the left-hand side of, the, of my screen, so I have two monitors. When you say show monitor clean, that means you can't see any of the background icons or my taskbar. So right now, I'm showing you monitor two, clean, which means you're not seeing my desktop image, you're not seeing anything that I have on my desktop, only this generic blue background. Okay. All right. Um, this across the top is a little toolbar, so you can do file, um, you can save the chat log, that's automatically saved for you as an instructor. There are options, so you can allow attendees to raise hands, you can remove that option away from them. These are just options that you need to um, customize. Uh, by default, I usually use the default settings, so something for you to kind of look at. I can also tell go to training what I want to see on my control panel. So if I'm not going to use my webcam, for example, I might deselect that. And if you'll notice right now, there's a webcam link right here. I can deselect that. I'm going to take that off of my control panel. So now I don't have as much junk that I'm not using. Okay, so you can customize this area. To open up this area, you click the plus sign. So you can see here I'm on a computer audio or I can call in by phone. And I can switch back and forth if I need to. I can also set a timer. So maybe I'm going to set, um, you know, for 10 minutes we're going to do this lecture, or for 10 minutes we're going to meet. You can change this time. And when I click Start Timer, the student will actually see that timer pop up on their screen, and they can move that around to their view that's uh, best for them. So it does have a timer feature. That is very unique to only the GoTo Training product. The dashboard kind of tells you how active people are. So right now I have seven people in attendance. Um, looks like you're paying about 83%, and that's based on hands raised, um, acti activity into um, the chat box, and that kind of thing. Kind of keep monitors that for you. I can also see a list of attendees. Now, by default, all of you came in with your microphones open. I have the option here of muting you all. Okay, so if someone um, doesn't realize their microphone's on and you can hear the dogs barking or the kids running around the kitchen, um, you can actually mute their microphones. I'm going to unmute you so because you guys can monitor your own audio channel. Okay, you can also allow students to raise their hand. This also tells me. Um, if they are using the keyboard and mouse, because I can give someone control to kind of answer a problem. I can also see if they have a webcam or turn their webcam on. I can also see if they've raised their hand or not. Okay. If you'd like to, why don't you go, just each one of you raise your hand. And you'll see what that looks like. And this is a little bit different from Blackboard Collaborate. When you raise your hand, thanks Ben, um, and Danielle, when you raise your hand in Blackboard Collaborate, 
you would see the hand raised, but you would also see a number. So you could see who raised their hands first. Um, that doesn't happen in the GoToTraining product, although I can see that the hands are raised, and I could go through um, and ask each one of you, you know, what your question was. As the instructor, I can also lower all of your hands, okay, which I just did. Now, you, when we first got started, um, we had one of our participants who were having technical difficulties getting in. So I can invite others. So I can click Invite Others, and I can email that person if I know their email account. So I can send them another link from my control panel if I need to try to reach a student, or um, maybe if I'm going to co-teach with uh, Becky or Ben, I can send them an invite and say, hey, I'm having difficulty. Can you jump in with me? Okay, um, I just got a message that my screen is frozen, and actually I'm not doing a whole lot right now. I'm just talking about this, um, this control panel. Okay, let me use the spotlight here real quick. Um, so I am moving my spotlight up and down. Oh, and you know what? It's not moving. Let's see what I've done. There we go. What were we doing when we were messing around? I hit this, um, I hit the pause button. So let me show you. When we do attendees, again, and hopefully, let me take this off here. Yeah, so under the attendees, go ahead and raise your hands again. There you go. So Danielle and Ben. So now you see your hands are raised. Okay. I can call on you, and you notice there, it doesn't number who came in first, and then I can lower your hands. To invite someone to the presentation, so maybe I'm having difficulty, something's not working, and I want to invite another instructor or a friend to join me, I can click Invite Others, and I can email them right from the GoToTraining product. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. I want to show you polls and tests first. So you may or may not like to use this to assess your learners. So you could say, how many of you read chapter what, you know, chapter three? Or how many of you are using the tutoring services? Um, and that might be a use of the polls to kind of see where the students are. So just for your um, entertainment purposes, I'm going to show you um, what a poll looks like in this environment. Um, I select it from the pull down menu because I created that before. If I want to create a new poll, I can click manage polls here and create one. I can also do a live poll. So right now I could ask the, um, everyone who is participating today, how many of you have taught uh, Math 123 using Blackboard Collaborate? Just please answer yes or no in the chat box. Okay, so that's a way to do a live poll. So I can ask that question, I can ask people to respond in the chat box, or I can do a formal poll, um, which is something I've created beforehand. And I'm going to go ahead and launch that for you. And your whole screen is taken over by this blue box, and it's asking you in the specific, how do you log in to Ivy Learn? So if you will, just use your cursor and select the correct answer. Um, using the radial dial. From the instructor view, and I know you can't see it right this second, um, I can see how many of you have voted, which is 83%. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And I can gather that information just for my own benefit, or I can share that with the class. And this is kind of something when you're engaging students and you're keeping students engaged, this is something that you might want to do, create some polls to see where they're at. You can also close the learning gap. So congratulations, 100% all of you agree that ivylearn.ivytech.edu um, is how you access our Ivy Learn platform. If, you know, 40%, 30% of you selected canvas.ivytech.edu, it would be my 
um, job as an instructor to help you, remind you where you find that content and maybe close that learning gap. So kind of a way to kind of assess where your students are, very similar to when we were using the clicker systems in the traditional classroom experience. So those are polls. I'm also going to show you um, really quickly what a test looks like. Okay, so I've selected a test. I've added that to my materials before we even started. Um, I created this, and again, this is multiple choice, multiple answer, very straightforward. You can't add images. Um, I'm not even sure you could do any kind of math equation editor. It's very text-based and very simple, similar. So right now, if you will, just go ahead and, you know, you don't have to be correct. Um, you should be seeing your test. And this is how I add a test during our time together online. So from a Math 123 perspective, maybe we have our breakout rooms and we're going to work on a particular type of pro um, problem and they collaborate and they work that out and they go through that process. You as an instructor can join those groups and kind of help them if they're having difficulty. Um, if you think about it, those breakout rooms is, are very similar to what we do in a flipped classroom in a traditional sense. Okay. At the end of the, our time together, I could actually do maybe just offer them one problem and I want the students to individually work out a similar problem that we've been working on in the breakout rooms. This will allow you if the students to know if the students are getting it and you'll see those test, draw, test results in that go-to training account um, under reports and you'll see all the students um, information there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close that test. Okay. All right, before we try a breakout room, any questions or comments or suggestions? You guys are an easy group. All right, okay. So now to create a breakout session, to go into a breakout session. I will just warn you that every time I do this, um, something gets quirky and it will appear in a different way and something will do something strange every time. Uh, Kara Monroe and I sit here for three hours one night just like, what, what did you get when you did this? And we practiced back and forth. Um, so I really wanna encourage you after this session, you know, to grab a friend or maybe three or four of you and just practice being the presenter and just practice, um, you know, using this technology and what it's like to set up a, uh, a go-to breakout session. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and hopefully you will be able to see this. I'm going to um, show my main monitor. Um, I'm going to select from activity, actually let me just bounce back for just a second. Okay. So to access the breakout rooms, you go to activity, okay, this is a little pod underneath go to training on your go to training control panel, okay, this is available to you as the instructor. Okay, I'm going to choose an activity. And when I do that, it shows me a different view, okay? My screen changes into this pod here, okay? So this is how I actually set up my breakout room. And you're seeing the instructor view right now, okay? So over on the left-hand side, I'll see all of the people who are currently enrolled in the training session or in my synchronous session, so here's everyone who's here today, okay? I can, here is my content area, my main content area. I can select to do this, we can collaborate together, um, all of us at once in this small group, or I can break you into different groups. So from the pull-down menu, 
I can break you out into two different groups, three groups, four groups, how many, up to six different groups, okay, and it will automatically um, break those groups in two or three or how many different areas. So I'm going to select two groups, okay. Uh, before I talk about how you can manually change the group dynamic, you'll see that a pop-up window automatically populated. So over here on the right-hand side, this is where I set up the activity that I want my group to do. Okay, so we can edit a doc together, we can look at an image or a PDF, um, we, I can allow them to share their screens or they can use audio only. But what Google um, is the preferred document sharing. So if you're going to collaborate on a document together, you're going to use the Ivy Tech Google account, okay, and it's going to prompt you. So if I wanted to edit a document together, I can sign in with my Google account. I have several, so I'm going to select my Ivy Tech account, okay. And you'll see earlier I added a Google Doc called Math 123 Demo. Okay, I'm going to close this out. You can skip these steps once you went through it for the first time, but it does pop up every time that you set up um, a breakout room. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, just before we continue on this track over here, GoTo has automatically created my groups for me, but maybe I want to... Um, want to mix up the group, so Phyllis, I really want her to be in breakout B, so I just select her name with my little hand icon, and I just drag and drop her over into the other section, and I'm going to drag and drop Mike over into breakout session A. Okay, so you can actually create these manually by dragging and dropping, or you can let the system create those groups for you automatically. Okay. <clears throat> Earlier, I added a PDF that I took from your actual math course, okay? So I can edit a document, and when I select that, um, I select the document that I want you to work on together. I can only select one item at a time, but I can change those items during the session if I need to. Or I can do, um, I want you to look at this PDF together, okay? So first, let's practice what it looks like if I'm going to do a document together. So I'm going to select my Math 123 demo. Okay. Now, once sh what should happen <laughs> is once I start the breakout session, you should be able to work in your own individual sessions on this document together. Okay. When you create your Google account for the first time in the breakout session, it will automatically in Google Drive create a go to training folder. So all the documents are hidden in that go to training folder. It creates that for you with Google Drive. Okay. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's cross our fingers and let's hope this works. I'm going to start the breakout session. Okay, I'm getting a message that just a moment. Okay, once I'm in this breakout session, okay, um, I can see all of the breakout sessions. I can see who's in there. Can you just confirm for me that you can still hear my audio? If you can still hear my audio, please let me know in the chat box. Okay.
Okay, so now we should all be back in our regular uh, go-to training site. Um, right now you should be seeing my instructor view. So I can see both breakout A and breakout B. I can now click on either one of these documents that you are editing to open them up as an instructor and review it. Okay, so that's the instructor view. Oops. Oops, I've kicked myself out of the uh, that particular course section. So let me go back into and share my screen again. I like the fact that it's just kicked me out completely of the core out of the session. Let me go back into my activity. Every time it's something quirky and weird. Okay, so what I did is when I hit that X button, it completely took me out of that um, session. So what it's loading right now is I'm going back in. I clicked activity from my go-to training control panel and I've created activity again so I could go back in to my um, sessions, breakout sessions. Okay. Now one of the quirky things it does, so there for a while I'm still talking to you about well now I'm back in the breakout sessions. It will pause your screen on the last screen so frequently you have to go into your go to training um, pod. And let me show you what that looks like here. Okay, and it will automatically pause it for you. So when it pauses the screen, even if I change the, the screen um, or do something on my screen, it doesn't show the audience view. So I always try to have my audience view open um, so I can see what's going on. And then I also want to definitely make sure that I'm paying attention to is my screen paused or not. Okay, so I'm going to go over back into our breakout session. Okay. All right, so we've now done a collaborative document using Google Documents. I'm going to create another um, activity for us. I'm going to open this back up okay, so by creating another activity. This time I'm going to look at a PDF. Okay, so this is going to, I actually took this document right out of your course. When I select that, you'll see that I've already added what is quantitative reasoning. I highlight that with a check mark. So when we go into our breakout sessions, um, you're going to see this document. Now prior to you seeing that document as an instructor, I want to give you very specific instructions on what the students should be doing and how they should be collaborating. Okay, So that's part of delivering a good synchronous course, giving the students clear directions. And especially those first couple times, you're going to want to make sure that you're jumping in to those um, breakout rooms and really prompting students. So maybe you have a questionnaire that the students have. Um, you want to make sure that they are answering those specific questions. Whatever it might be, you want to make sure that you're encouraging that collaboration. You might ask specifically questions of those students once you get into that breakout room um, about the question or whatever your um, content you're delivering. Okay. So this time I'm going to go ahead and um, start the breakout session again. I'm going to lose audio with you for just a few moments until I join your room, but you will be able to see the PDF document and uh, go from there. So I click Start.
Okay, hello everyone again. So hopefully um, you noticed that I could send a group message to everyone in those breakout sessions. Um, and you noticed that once I hit end session, um, you have a 10 second countdown. So you might wanna, as a courtesy, you know, give them a countdown. We're gonna end the session in one minute, five minutes, three minutes, um, so that 10 seconds isn't uh, a major catastrophe where students are scrambling to get those last few discussion points in. All right, well that brings us right about to the end of our time. Um, I hope that you have found this information very helpful. Um, do you have any questions for me? Please feel free to use your microphone or to post those in the chat box. Yeah, Phyllis brings up a great point. Um, the need to practice, I can tell you that, yes, practice, practice, practice. I recommend, um, it's easier to practice these breakout sessions if you have a couple people with you. Um, so if you can, you know, get a couple friends together or maybe the synchronous team can get together and practice presenting to each other or parts of you can get together. Um, practicing and becoming more familiar with each one of these tools is really gonna be helpful. Okay. Don't forget on that go to training page, there's the 24 seven support. And then when you're building those, um, your training sessions, there's also each individual little tutorials and there's handouts about all of this material built in to the system as well. Okay. I want to thank you for your time. I did record this session and I will make that available to you as soon as possible. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, you're always welcome to give me a call or email me. It's klong at ivytech.edu. Okay. Your instructional designers will also be on hand to help you. And if you have not located your go-to training account, um, search for log me in or reach out again to the instructional designer or to a help desk ticket to make sure that you have access to that, uh, that particular tool. Thank you again. I will stay online with you for just a few more minutes in case you have questions, but otherwise, thank you very much for attending today.